Uh, oh, uh, welcome to uh, Libertarian Alliance meeting. We meet here uh, every uh, uh, Tuesday of the month. And you're welcome to all meetings. Uh, today our topic is uh, abortion infanticide, a uh, triple libertarian defence, a critical rationalist defence. Thank you. Introduction. <laughs> the moral permissibility of abortion and infanticide can be explained and defended in three principal ways. One, the unborn and infant human is not a person. Two, the unborn and infant human is not proactively imposed on. No overall harm is inflicted. And three, the better consequences of allowing abortion and infanticide rights. All three ways can be characterised as types of libertarian explanations and defences, although none of these presuppose the ideology of libertarianism. The arguments stand or fall to the same degree were any references to libertarianism as such removed. Assuming the truth of critical rationalist epistemology, all of these explanations are necessarily conjectural. There will, also, there will also be some brief discussion of related rights and duties of the parents. One, the unborn and infant human is not a person. An unborn homo sapiens is human, although perhaps not yet a particular human, if before the stage at which twins, etc., can occur and not be reversed. It is human at whatever stage of development, zygote, morula, blastocyst, embryo, fetus, etc. However, it is not a person in the intellectual attainment sense. A person is here theorised to be capable of higher level critical theorizing. That is, having theories about his theories beyond merely noticing that they do or don't appear to be functional. And it seems that language may well be necessary to achieve this. This assumes that there is some real distinction between a person and a non-person that can be discovered and adapts the epistemology of critical rationalism produ to produce a theory of what constitutes personhood. It is not itself a definition or criterion of personhood, although it can be used in either of these ways as well. An unborn human is not a person because it has, at most, and mainly in the later stages, appetites and instincts. This text, or talk in this case, will not go into a detailed explanation and defence of this theory of personhood. It suffices that this theory, or something relevantly like it, appears to capture a real and important aspect of sufficiently developed humans. Being a person is necessary to give human beings their higher moral value, more or less because they have sophisticated minds or consciousnesses that are created by using their brains for reflective theorising. Biologically, humans are animals. Animals that are not persons, let us here call them beasts, this is a stipulative definition, have moral value as well. And it is certainly possible to behave immorally towards them, although this is outside libertarian theory. In particular, by causing them indefensible pain or suffering. And some beasts, chimpanzees, elephants and dolphins, for instance, 
approach being persons without quite achieving it. So moral duties towards them exceed that of unambiguous beasts. But being a person is what makes wrong all proactively imposed costs, this being a libertarian theory of inflicted harms that flout self-ownership and libertarian property, these being the practical applications of an abstract theory of interpersonal liberty that I won't go into. You'll be very pleased to know. The unborn human is usually a potential person, but then so are any sperm and ovum that could, in principle, be conjoined, or even any food or other substances that could eventually be converted into a person. They're a potential person, but presumably they would need to be converted at least into an ovum first. A, a sperm, apparently, is no longer required for fertilisation and uh, 3D printers uh, haven't got round to printing people yet, but it'll happen. Therefore, it would be absurd to hold that a potential person already has the moral status of an actual person or even of anything approaching that. It would be just as absurd to reverse this and hold that a potential non-person, as anyone might be considered to be by death or brain damage, for instance, already has the moral status of an actual non-person or even of anything approaching that. If it is not inherently immoral to kill a non-person, as beasts are, then it is not inherently immoral to kill an unborn human. Some vegetarians might have problems with this argument, it occurs to me. It follows that neither is it inherently immoral to kill an infant not yet a person, although there might be bad social side effects of one kind or another, such as greatly upsetting some people who might also resort to violence. It is probably best to draw a line for permissible infanticide erring on the side of non-personhood, maybe sometime in the first year or so after birth, and always uh, well before sufficiently sophisticated speech or other communication indicates that personhood has been achieved. The word infant has its origins in the Latin infans, meaning unable to speak. The agreement of any parents or guardians would, of course, be necessary. They have a property claim in the human non-person. It might immediately be suggested as an attempted reductio ad absurdum that by this standard, an unconscious or comatose adult human is not a person, but only a potential person, and so morally on a par with an unborn or infant human as regards the permissibility of killing him. However, as long as consciousness can be recovered, it looks far more cogent to see this as an existing person. Personhood is not merely potential, but has already been achieved. It is simply that this person's consciousness is temporarily interrupted, and so full rights relating to personhood remain. This, then, appears to be one sufficient explanation of the way in which the abortions and infanticides, infanticides of humans are not intrinsically immoral. It is libertarian in the sense that this ideology entails that only persons have a prima facie right not to have their liberty infringed. Other accounts of personhood have been used to argue in more or less the same way on this issue, such as Warren, 1973. I can give you uh, full references if you're interested later. However, 
They will not be compared and contrasted here. This is primarily intended to explain the matter in terms of libertarianism and critical rationalism. Two, the unborn and infant human is not proactively imposed on. Even if an unborn human were a person in the intellectual sense, it would not be infringing his liberty or libertarian rights to withdraw the support of the womb so that he dies. This is to discontinue giving the gift of support after the gift of initial conception. It might be suggested that at least if it is a person, there is some sort of contract between the mother and the unborn human to bring him to term, etc. But there is no kind of even implied offer or acceptance of that offer or any quid pro quo which contracts require. The pregnant woman usually did tacitly consent to at least risk creating the unborn human, but that is not thereby tacitly to consent to continue to support it. This is now becoming, this is now like becoming attached to an unconscious adult person, whether intentionally by chance or by carelessness, where no one else could have supported that particular adult, analogous with the usual relationship between a pregnant woman and her unborn human, and who requires your bodily support for nine months. If you decide that you do not wish to continue the support, then there is no overall proactive imposition, inflicted harm, on the unconscious adult by stopping. And there is no inherent moral difference in these terms between simply unplugging, if that is possible, and actively killing the unconscious adult if that is necessary, or even merely more convenient, in defence of your right to use your own body as you wish. There seem to be two necessary and sufficient aspects for moral permissibility here. One, you have exercised your right to defend your use of your own body. And two, the unconscious adult is no worse off than if, you've, if you had never started to support him in the first place. One too hasty criticism might be that such an argument would seem to imply that killing one's adult children is permissible as they are thereby not worse off than they would have been had you never benefited them by conception, etc. in the first place. But that would be to overlook, one, killing your adult children is not to defend your use of your own body. It might be to defend your money. Those familiar with the philosophical literature in this area will notice that all of this is at least somewhat like the position taken by Judith Jarvis Thompson in her famous 1971 article. But like the other article on personhood, it doesn't go far enough in consistently drawing out its logical implications. However, by removing the contingent complications surrounding both abortion and being attached to another person, it is possible to make a more fundamental argument that should be clearer and more cogent. Here is that argument. To bestow a benefit on others for their own sakes is prima facie morally good. To proactively impose inflict harms on others for whatever reason is prima facie morally bad. To do neither is prima facie morally neutral. It cannot proactively impose on other people to deny them a bestowal of a benefit. Jump a bit here. Libertarianism in particular appears to require these three moral distinctions, the good, the bad, and the neutral. But in any case, logical analysis also appears to imply them. For if we want to classify mere failure to benefit people as immoral, then conversely, 
we seem bound to classify mere failure to proactively impose on people as positively moral. But proactive impositions are usually far easier to bring about than bestowable benefits. Consequently, we fail to proactively impose on people to a far greater extent than we fail to bestow, bestow benefits on them. This implies two paradoxes. One, merely by doing nothing, we are usually both moral and immoral, or on balance, positively moral. And two, there is no conceptual room for neutrality or innocence. From this more fundamental argument, we can see that the unborn and infant human is only benefited by conception and support, or at least there is no proactive imposition in that process. Therefore, removal of that continuing bestowed benefit cannot itself be a proactive imposition. This is the meeting for discussion. Therefore, removal of that continuing bestowed benefit cannot itself be a proactive imposition, assuming that no suffering is inflicted thereby, even if we assume he is a person. This is so whether abortion involves some expulsion or the painless physical destruction of the unborn human. And to fail to support an infant so that he dies painlessly is not proactively to impose, to inflict harm on that infant. Abortion and infanticide are, in themselves, morally neutral. Three, the better consequences of allowing abortion and infanticide. Even if we assume that the unborn or infant human both is a person and is proactively imposed on, Coercing women to carry to term their unwanted, unborn humans, or to support their infants, or to give them to others to support, cannot plausibly increase overall human welfare compared to allowing women to bear and raise children when they wish to do so. That abortion and infanticide rights are welfare maximising seems fairly clear. First, there is the significant welfare reduction to would-be aborting or infanticiding women if they are prevented. Then there is the fact that preventing abortions or infanticides of unwanted humans must thereby to some extent be to reduce the numbers of wanted unborn and infant humans that are in competition for the same resources. And wanted offspring are, on average, likely to have better lives than unwanted offspring. This position is libertarian only in the sense that some libertarians think that abortion and infanticide rights are both compatible with liberty and also with the best welfare outcomes, either because they are consequentialist libertarians or because they are critical rationalist libertarians who defend the libertarian conjecture from all criticisms, including consequentialist ones. Four, two related private property and contract issues. All that said, if people strongly object to abortion or infanticide for whatever reasons, then they can still choose to live in private property areas or join private organisations where these are contractually proscribed on pain of whatever penalties they wish to go into or remain in those areas or private organisations would be to contract to accept <coughs> those proscriptions and those penalties. But even then, the breaking of the contract would still not conflict with any rights or liberties of the unborn or infant human. It would conflict only with the rights or liberties of the parties with whom one has contracted. Current state legislation concerning child support does not approximate to what is libertarian. Where a man passes his sperm during consensual sexual intercourse with a woman, he cannot thereby have any libertarian rights concerning the resultant unborn or infant human. 
In the same way, a woman who freely chooses to risk unprotected or imperfectly protected sex does not thereby have any rightful claims against the man if she becomes pregnant. To gain any such rights on either side, a contract is required, such as a marriage contract. Once again, though, private property rules can override this intrinsic position. Some people might want to live in areas where there is an implied contract for men and women to have duties and rights with respect to their unborn or infant humans. But without, allow, but without allowing people to choose such real property solutions, it seems highly unlikely that the state can reliably approximate to what they would be. Therefore, the intrinsic position of no rights or duties without a contract should prevail. Conclusion. On its own, each of the three principal arguments may be sufficient to explain the moral permissibility of the abortion and infanticide of unwanted humans, depending on the types of criticisms being addressed. Taking them together, they amount to a consistent and fairly comprehensive account that it is hard to see could easily be refuted. It is common, however, for people to accept some version of these arguments as applied to abortion, but reject them as regards infanticide, and that is simply to be logically inconsistent. Thank you. Any comments, Mr. Go? <coughs> yeah, thanks for the talk. Very interesting. Um, I, I kind of tend to agree with you on, on the first bit that um, it's problematic to call um, uh, uh, fetuses uh, for persons, but I don't quite see how that is a libertarian position. I think this is more uh, an atheistic or uh, because because liberty is for persons, yes, and not for non-persons. Yes, but uh, it's not for have, might, might might have other definitions of uh, or uh, concepts of, of what a person is. If you oh yes. You, well, you can, be a, you can yeah. be a Christian and a libertarian, and then you might have a different... Oh, yeah, of course, of course. I know uh, there's, a big, there's a big argument about... I mean, if, for instance, you're a creationist and you believe that the angels put a soul into the... Con the as soon as the, there's a conception occurs, a soul is put in, then these, none of these arguments are really going to work for you. And I'm just... But then the real argument is an argument about people's invisible friends and how much credence we should put in that and not, not really to do with abortion and infanticide yes. as such. Yes, mm. uh, that, that I agree with. Um, but I would keep libertarianism open to, to people who believe the, these things. I don't see that you need to have a materialistic kind of worldview that excludes... I don't... Well, as you know, we, we, libertarian atheism is a broad church. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we allow libertarian non-atheists in. Uh, yeah, but on, 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 the, on, the, on the second thing that, that, she, that you were uh, um, saying, uh, that if it is a person, let's assume it is a person. Yes. Uh, then I think he. <laughs> Sorry, the fetus or the infant or both or. Yeah, yeah, the the the, the, the fetus, the the uh, the young, uh, yeah, the, the fetus essentially is a, is a person. Is a person in some uh, sense. Yeah, yeah if, if that is assumed, then I think you can't you can argue that there is some kind of implicit contract that you've put that person into a certain situation, and therefore you need to follow through and and bring that out, uh, do everything that you can to get that person out of that uh, that situation alive, because. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you know, there's an implicit contract. You, you gave a talk, I think, on uh, on um, um, whether whether you, you can make contracts about um, uh, specific performances. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, and you argued for that, and, mm. and you could could argue there is some kind of specific performance uh, implicit contract here that once you have put put yeah. that fetus in the position, you 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 are responsible to. But then you put it in the position in the same way that you have is if you find an unconscious adult. There's only you around. You can save the adult uh, by somehow connecting him to your own body. 
you do that and you are saving him and then for whatever reason maybe a very good health reason or maybe a very trivial reason you decide I'm not I don't want to do this anymore so you unplug so but that adult ex hypothesize it's, it's a it's a it's already a real person as well yeah. but you started to save him and decided no I'm going to stop now if you're allowed to stop that adult then you should be allowed to stop with the fetus that's well that's the argument this is a, essentially Judith Jarvis Thompson's argument she doesn't like to push it the whole way because she doesn't like the idea that for trivial reasons you can maybe have an abortion or on holiday I can't remember the full details but um, I mean, that's the essence of it so even if we assume that it's a person do we automatically have a duty to help him just because we've started helping him you must continue now you've started, you must continue. I don't see it. Uh, there's no contract. There is no, it's an unconscious man or woman. How could there have been a contract? If you want to say, well, sort of implicitly, well, uh, implicitly, how can you have an implicit contract with somebody who's completely unconscious? You've started to rescue them. You've decided, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm stopping. Similarly, in a sense, you're rescuing um, you know, a fetus from oblivion. It, it, it sort of was, let's assume, there was an oblivion and it existed. Uh, and now, you know, it's totally reliant on you to say, no, I've had enough. Uh, I'm not going to do anything. I can't, that's why I tell there's, for there to be a tacit contract, there has to be agreement on both sides. And there can't be agreement with uh, somebody who's completely unconscious. And usually, in uh, not all, all, every country's laws, but in, certainly in English law, there has to be uh, an exchange as well. Not just a, it's not just a promise, but somebody says, "I will do this for you if you do this for me," and you right. That's then a contract. I can't see that there's anything like that with um, when you uh, if a woman finds herself pregnant. Not, not, you know, I can see how people superficially might think there's something that looks like that but then I, I don't it doesn't bear scrutiny as far as I can see but if you yeah, uh, yeah. Um, if, um, if it's morally and libertarianly permissible to kill an infant up to personhood it follows that it's morally and libertarianly permissible to do something less than kill it like rape it and <coughs> the first year um, suffering uh, that would uh, that would come under the heading of um, unnecessary causing unnecessary suffering, and therefore uh, would be intrinsically wrong, even with respect to other animals. So, assuming it's not a person, then you say, uh, but of course it was completely unconscious. But then, right, right. if we anaesthetise it and then rape it, and then when it gets to be one, well, we'll kill it. Uh, yeah, yeah, sort of getting into the realms of... <laughs> What's wrong with your uh, argument? <laughs> there's nothing, I mean, in a sense, we can imagine all kinds of... It's possible to imagine all kinds of uh, things which have um, the yuck factor uh, morally, uh, which are consistent with libertarianism. No, which are consistent with libertarianism. <laughs> which is consistent with libertarianism in principle, but they, they don't really focus on the real problem. Um, uh, uh, I, I sort of put that aside as a separate. I don't think many people would tolerate that sort of thing, and therefore, yeah, you're right. <laughs> therefore, it wouldn't be a, it wouldn't be allowed <laughs> for that sort of. <laughs> and also, it makes it a difficult point to argue. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to defend it. I don't defend it. I, so, I'll come back <laughs> with a more philosophical bit later. Hmm. <laughs> Something more realistic. Oh. Yeah, we'll just come back on. on uh, about uh, if, if you start helping somebody and you stop, yes, that's okay. Well, if somebody's at sea and you they're drowning and you save yeah. them, and then you know halfway through the trip you're like, well, actually, I don't really fancy helping you, and you tell them to jump off the boat. Yeah, wouldn't that be? Would, would, I, I guess most laws would be against that. Oh well, yeah. Well, forget what the laws are against or not against. I mean, that's a very interesting example. Yeah. And um, well, let me let me elaborate. Just yeah. Okay. Uh, so, 
So that's projected on a stranger, right? So that's a person, a stranger you're saving. But, yeah. But it's not a stranger that you're saving. So in addition to you not being able to do that and see this is not a stranger, this is somebody that you created. So you have, you know, it's, mm. it's not a stranger. So the, on top of that, I, I would add that later. Um, once you have pulled somebody on board your boat I'm thinking about this for the first time because I haven't really thought about this particular example um, you've sort of already rescued them uh, you're not attached to them um, you may say uh, I don't want you on my boat I want you to jump overboard but if they refuse to jump uh, and you push them, that does look like murder to me. But that, I, you know, as I said, I'm just thinking this through for the first time. Uh, it, it's, it seems it's different from somehow being attacked. You're not defending your body, your self-ownership. You could say you're defending your, your ship ownership. You're I mean, they're on your... They're on, you're defending your property, Anne. Yeah, you're defending your property. Uh, I suppose from a libertarian point of view as this is my f sort of first thoughts on this you might um, yeah I mean you could let's suppose you did this on a regular basis you went round pulled people out of the water after half an hour you threw them back in again and that, you did that all the time. Well, in a sense, they are no worse off than if you never did it. I mean, they are, they're, not, they're, not wor they're not worse off, if, except for the fact that they're maybe a bit disgruntled by the fact that they thought they'd been saved and then they thought they'd been thrown in again. And, it, and the, so apart from that mental distress uh, uh, that you've occasioned... <laughs> They're quite happy about it. <laughs> oh, no, they're not happy about it. They're not happy about it. But the point is, if, if, if somebody did this, it's you couldn't idea. really point to anything in the world that, that that person had caused to be made worse off, apart from the fact that these people were annoyed that, that they somebody had apparently annoyed. rescued them and, and, then, and then stopped. So I guess you're... Now, however, I'm not saying that that would be likely to happen because uh, with libertarian contracts and rules of the sea and all that sort of thing, I expect that sort of thing would be explicitly disallowed in the same way that um, you can't you know, sort of drive at any speed you like on a motorway because there will be rules of the motorway. And so whilst there is always the intrinsic libertarian position, as I, I would call it, uh, as soon as you uh, put it in a proprietarian context, you get something more realistic, and that's far less likely to be uh, bizarre, and much more likely to be the sort of things that most people would want. Could you? Yeah, um, do you think uh, imbeciles achieve personhood? And the, the problem here is, isn't, isn't drawing the boundary hugely problematic here? I mean, surely it's, it's arbitrary and subjective, this boundary between personhood and non-personhood. I mean, who decides on that? Um, as I said, it's, it's the beginnings of a theory of personhood, and there are others. Uh, that there could be tests, and, um, you know, and uh, presumably... Um, if you are not capable of achieving um, intellectual tasks, which a dog can do, or maybe uh, any of the corvines, jackdaws or crows or whatever, uh, we'd say, well, then he's not, it's not really a person, because he can't, he's just not capable. Um, and, um, well, I don't have trouble with that. I mean, I, if, I mean, even personally, if I had a child and that child uh, just its intellectual development stopped before it ever became capable of being uh, intellectually competent, I'd say may as well uh, put it out of its misery because it's not going to have any kind of a life.
but it's not compulsory. Anybody who wanted to bring up their child or put it in a home would have that option. Bob? Uh, it's been said um, that women are not nests that men lay their eggs in. Um, a fertilised fetus is a joint venture in which women labour, I think the word is, with considerable effort to get the thing going and continue um, going on merrily. Uh, mm. Has the woman no rights in this? So you're um, alluding to the, the final sort of uh, stages of the argument, which is sort of really beyond in, uh, whether the abortion and infanticide are acceptable. Um, I can't see how you can get out of the situation. That, I don't see why, just because there are consequences of your behaviour, your, you can claim rights or people can claim duties against you unless uh, explicit private property rights have been um, agreed. Now, there's the the initial stage where you own yourself and nobody else has any rights over you unless you it can be a tacit contract it could be in this town it's well known that anybody who gets a woman pregnant has got uh, an, an obligation to her financially and various other ways of it. in which case and you Therefore, don't get a woman pregnant in this town if you're not prepared to accept those consequences. But in the pure abstract, I just don't see how any man can be held to be liable. Uh, he has given his sperm away, as it were. Or how, how, or how any woman can, any man can say to any woman, I have rights over that child. If he didn't marry her, he's got no rights over that child. So it cuts both ways. I mean... But ultimately, the woman has to be able to be in charge of her contraception or non-contraception, and the man shouldn't be able to um, interfere in any way unless she says, I allow you to have these rights as long as you have these duties, and therefore, um, I said, in, 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 in the conventional way, of course, it would just be by marriage. The he's marriage done. is what commits you. He's done his bit. She carries and labours with and feeds and all the rest of it. Yeah. The fetus. It's her fetus. It's her fetus, yes. What, what's going to do with him then? What rights does he have? I don't think he does have any rights unless... No. unless no, 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 that's my point. I said it cuts both... He, she can't make any claim against him for any support unless he explicitly contracted to that, and he can't make any claims over the unborn that you can't abort it. She can't, he can't tell her she can't abort it. He can't tell her how it must be raised. He can't have any rights of access. I mean, I said, it, cuts, it cuts both ways, unless they explicitly say, if we have a child, we contract. Now, I said, you could do this in various a variety of ways, but the normal ways, marriage, and marriage means it's fairly explicit, you've got rights and duties on both sides with respect to any children that you produce. As soon as there's no contract, I think all, all bets are off. She, can, she, can't get, she can't get any money out of him, he can't claim any rights to see the child or anything else from her. That seems to be the status quo from a libertarian point of view. But, of course, I would always argue that the libertarian point of view is um, has good consequences. It internalises externalities in anything that interfered with the libertarian uh, outcome would make things worse by creating moral hazards in a variety of ways. Uh, I remember when I was at school, there was an Irish girl who got pregnant. She was a chambermaid, nothing to do with me. And um, she was given a council flat and she had to stop working as a chambermaid. And her two friends, who were both chambermaids, thought this is a good idea. So they both got pregnant and they both got given flats. Uh, and I observed this. And I thought there's something, 
there's something going very wrong here. And uh, of course it's the, the state playing the role of the father. So merely by being pregnant, they've got a claim to support. But in this case, not against the father, but against the state. Of course they would. Were they able to catch the men, have tried to get the um, resources out of their men to some extent as well. But uh, uh, I don't know whether that ever happened. But I don't, you know, this, the men shouldn't have been held responsible and the women. And, and it, so the perverse consequences are quite clear. Once you say you can have these rights, uh, uh, it's not really a good idea for people to uh, have children at everybody else's expense. It's, uh, it's not as good an idea as it is to have people responsibly saying, we want to have children and we're prepared to pay for them and raise them ourselves. You're going to get uh, better consequences all round as, as a result. So I would always say the libertarian position is not, from my point of view, it's not just that is what the libertarian position is, but I would always defend it as I, uh, uh, always being likely to produce the best results. Paul? Um, if what we're, we're doing, and I think we should be doing, is trying to find out the pre proprietarian libertarian moral baseline before we start deciding what kind of society we might opt into. Yeah. You're, you're arguing that uh, it only applies to entities with personhood and that infants are not persons, and their potentiality to be persons is not relevant. Yes. It's absurd. But isn't it the same true that of dead people, why do we bother to respect the wills of the dead? Why don't we just scavenge the bodies of the dead and harvest them for organs? Surely, even if you're dead, you're not a person, never mind whether you're unconscious, you're not a person, but we still respect the wills of the dead. So it seems that personhood does extend beyond, or that their, their, their qualification for libertarian respect does extend, it just seeps out of the edge of the personhood, before, in, uh, before in fact, and after death at both edges, it seems to me that there is a permeability, and you, you, you met your, yours was a quite a quick, glib, slippery slope argument. It said, no, it's absurd. This potentiality thing. It yeah. seemed to me to be so absurd. I am sympathetic to the idea of what we might call, but it sounds absurd. You know, the rights of the dead. Uh, if somebody. Um, creates something and then says in his will. For instance, this often happens. Uh, uh, an artist says, I want you to burn all of the paintings that are in my studio. And they're his paintings and the ones that he wants on display are already on display. And I'm sympath very sympathetic to the idea that you should burn those paintings. And uh, in some sense, you are flouting the liberty of the dead person, but then that's because I, uh, I, for me, this isn't really problematic because my theory of liberty is more to do with um, the extent to which people are proactively interfer interfering with your want satisfaction. Now, your want satisfaction can be within your life or after your life, uh, just as much, in a sense, after as before. So, in a sense, from my from the point of view of my theory of liberty, not to burn the paintings of the artist who says you can put all of the others in the National Gallery but as long as you burn these, would be to flout the liberty of the artist just as much as if the artist were to say anybody who can uh, buys my paintings can put them anywhere but not in a toilet. If you were to put it in a toilet, you would be flouting his liberty, even though he never knows about it, because it's not to do what about what he knows about it and what, what he and whether it has any effect on his utility. It's just whether you you're breaking your agreement with him, as it were. So you can and your agreements can extend beyond what you're aware of while you happen to be alive, and beyond what you could even theoretically be aware of after your death. So I am sympathetic to the idea of rights. Uh, you can interfere with the liberty of people after their death. I'm sympathetic to that idea, it sounds a bit peculiar. However, I can't see how you can, you can project it backwards to before they were persons. Somebody might say... Well, we, we, all, we, all, know what our, we all know now that we wouldn't want to have been killed as an infant. Uh, 
And <laughs> so we can, theor we can theorize, we can theorize that we would want it to, in our first year of our life, we would want it to have been brought up properly in such a way that we can achieve personhood. Yes. That's, that's it's so obvious that everybody believes that, you know, or, or wants that to be the case. And your, your point of a cut-off point of, a, of one year would just lead to an absolute untold horror show. <laughs> It would, it, it would be, <laughs> it would be institutionalised and obvious, very carefully discussed. Me, I don't know why you say it. The obvious point is at least yeah. birth, because that is where you start having a clash between the mother's body and the infant's body. They become separated. Yes. So that seems to me to be the most obvious point yeah. at which you can start respecting person, even if we don't grant that they're fully personless immediately. It's going to be. However, a that's going to be a slug. that argument is completely separate from the other argument because you can say. You, were, you, you, you didn't want to be aborted, you're glad you weren't aborted. So, so your first argument has got nothing to do with your second argument, which is really that at birth they're separated and therefore, and I can understand somebody saying, well, you no longer need to support it in a way. You've given birth to it, you no longer need to support it. The, 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 the nuns of infinite uh, mercy. mercy and charity or whatever uh, want to look after it. Yeah, but no, but my point is that personhood isn't an abrupt end. It's a slippery slope. There's a slide into personhood and a slide out of personhood. It doesn't. It's not absolutely discreet, as you seem to. Of course, I'm not, no, I'm not. I'm not saying it's uh, suddenly switches on and off like a light bulb. Obviously. Yeah, and, f and for convenience, we want cut-off points. Yes, and and, 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 and that's why I said. Is yeah. the obvious cut point. Well, except that, except that uh, at birth you're clearly not yet a person in the intellectual no, sense. No, you're clearly separated from relying on the other person. Uh, well, no, you're not because uh, if if you're uh, in the house of your mother or maybe your parents or whatever, and they notice that you're severely disabled, and they may say, "Ah, well, we don't think we want him to be uh, nourished. We'd rather he passed away." Because if we, it upsets us that anybody else should raise our mm, severely disabled it's son. It's perfectly oh, but, uh, but well, that would be different. But I mean, I'm I'm sort of choosing so plausible example. Just, but if it's um, if it's perfectly healthy and you just put it, if uh, it could be that it's um, for whatever reason, the mother's gone through to the stage of actually having the birth and then finds. Uh, it really is not practical for her to raise the child mm -hmm. and she doesn't want to give it to somebody else so she chooses not to feed it. It's not actually to, it's not actually to kill it, to refuse to feed it or to feed it something or to give it something that stops it suffering but um, you know it's going to die anyway so it shortens its mm. life but it would have died anyway as long as I can't see um, it, that's letting die rather than actively killing. Though I'm not, I don't really think that it matters. It, given that it's going to die anyway, whether you do actively kill it. But uh, for people who are squeamish, you can just let it die. Steve, I'm one of the squeamish ones actually. Uh, that's never so, been so my experience. From, from this, it's perfectly okay <laughs> for the child having been born yeah. to be starved to death by the parents in their house. Not if it suffers, because uh, because um, utilitarianism for animals and uh, libertarian rights for people. So uh, if you if you were to give, cause it to suffer unnecessarily, I think you'd have some obligation to um, put it down painlessly. If you're going to not, so if you if you do, if you if you don't want it to live, for you mean give it a pill, give it a pill, or at least uh, no, it, now that pill could. Stop the pain stop and, and end its life, or it could just stop the pain. Now, um, that's all right. Then. Uh, I once uh, <laughs> a, a, a nurse, an NHS nurse, told me uh, this was some years ago that it's standard practice in hospitals for um, you know severely uh, disabled and you know otherwise problematic children just to be given painkillers and then let die or in effect killed because their their death is actually hastened and then just tell the mother that the child had not survived and um really? my, now that apparently this nurse told me that was standard practice now my main objection to this is that it should have been the parents decision and not the 
not the nurse, you know, nurses or the doctors. My uh, basic line on this is that you, you just, there's certain actions which um, people take in line, which have certain consequences and people expect them to follow through on, you know, the actions that they've initiated. You know, if you, if you take a dog and you have a dog as a pet, you know, they expect you to behave in a certain way towards that dog. Yes. And not be cruel and beat them and stuff like that. So it's, it's that sort of thing, I think, also with um, abortion. Also, the, this personal thing, I think, is very, very shaky, Jan. Um, yeah. You know, there are lots and lots of people now growing old in, 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 in the Western world who yeah. are losing, by your definition, their personal. They are. Um, and uh, you might argue also that there are lots of people who never gained it. And it's, a, as, as Paul said, it's a very, very well, the ones shaky, who never gained shaky definition, you know. And, um, uh, well it's, well, it's not a definition, it's a theory, and, oh. but I would allow there to be, you know, Sorry, within, within, so, so within person, safe uh, criteria. When is a person, you know, hmm? that, that's the problem. When is a person not a person? Not a person, when can we pull the plug, you know? Uh, well, of course, if, uh, uh, if, if, if they're completely dependent on you and you don't have any uh, contract to support them, you can pull it any time. Yeah, I'm just saying, but at the uh, moment, uh, it, and, at it, the and, moment and, and it wouldn't be murder. At the moment, we have a quite dis different attitude towards the yeah. unborn child and old people who yeah. lost their person. You know, yeah. we, we keep them going. You know. and, and people should be allowed to do that. But if they didn't wish to, then they also should be allowed to not do so. Um, but of course, you'd have to go through the motions probably of no, calling in doctors to confirm that somebody who was so gar gar they were no longer even a person anymore. They didn't even have moments of uh, lucidity. They were gone. They were just sitting there in a zombie-like state and uh, nothing was going on in their brains, like brain scan or whatever. You know? And if you're feeding them by tube or whatever and then uh, cleaning up after them, of course, and so forth, and it's not a person. I don't see what would be wrong in saying, okay, now we can pull the plug. So, uh, I know a lady, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so for the uh, consequence, consequence, oh, sorry, I can't say the word, uh, but to the argument that states that um, uh, you want to maximize welfare, abortion in specific situations would maximize welfare. For example, uh, the woman uh, is not for the woman is not forced to uh, carry a baby for nine months, mm -hmm. or um, you know, a, a child doesn't come in being unwanted, that, that kind of thing. Um, I, I guess there's maybe one thing we're forgetting there is the welfare of the ba the, the the fetus. So if it dies. Uh, yeah. I mean that is also welfare. Oh yes. So I guess relative in relative terms. The yeah, but then there's 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 the there's the the fetus that dies and the one that won't exist because you kept it alive because you you're not going to have an infinite number of children. Yeah. Uh, there and it does can unwanted children compete for the resources of wanted children. So if you get rid of unwanted children, you're going to have more wanted children, and the wanted children are likely to have a better life. Fair enough, yeah. but you're comparing that to the death of a potential person, right? So, in in terms of welfare, yeah. uh, it depends what you define as welfare, because you could say, well, resources or having to carry a baby for nine months, but then you're comparing that to death, which is the yeah. ultimate... Well, I do have a theory of welfare, but I wasn't going to go into it. Uh, uh, I, I simply mean by welfare, you know... Uh, people living the sort of life where they think it was worth living and generally speaking if you if you're an unwanted uh, child on balance you're less likely to have such a life than if you are a wanted child but of course not in every case not in every case but that then but then consequentialism is all about looking at the whole thing uh, not looking at individual cases and saying, well, on balance, what is the better option for everybody? Um, yeah, I don't see how that fits with death. I'm trying to, trying to see 
it, it's, it's about weighing, I guess, these things uh, and what weight you would put on death, what weight you would put on, you know, a, a, a life well lived, for example. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, you were talking about the beginning of life now or the end of life first? Uh, no, I mean the, the death of the fetus. You know, you yes. It, that so, um, it depends the way you put that, and I guess that's. Well, know, of course, yeah. in a libertarian society, um, the mother or the parents or whoever is significantly involved would put whatever weight they wanted on it and behave accordingly. I'm not telling anybody. I mean, abortion rights are not abortion duties. You don't have to have an abortion if you don't want one. Uh, you don't have to uh, practice infanticide if you don't want to do so. I'm just saying, in principle, it looks as though if persons are what have rights, it should be morally acceptable to, uh, 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 in appropriate circumstances, to, to um, abort uh, an unwanted human or to commit infanticide uh, but certainly there's no obligation at all so there's no <coughs> spillover in that sense uh, um, uh, that's why sort of uh, in America the you know, pro-rights, pro-choice is a bit confusing it's always ought to be called abortion rights nobody is pro-abortion Except maybe some greens who want to get rid of as many human beings as possible. They, maybe they are, but they want to abort everybody. Yeah. So no, I just w uh, want to say I know a lady. She is eighty, and her husband is eighty-one or so. But he got a a, a sickness, and he he went to the hospital to stay just two weeks, and it's supposed to he died. It is two years, and she pay a thousand a week to just see his body. She feel yeah. she's destroyed because she pray for God to take him, and I see her pain day by day. Was she being? Was he attached to a machine? That was no, 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 no. He just alive. I mean, then were they feeding him dementia. by a tube? Yeah, got dementia. He had dementia, so did, yeah, could, he, dementia. could he eat or...? No, 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 just by... So, so he couldn't... But not in, the, not in the machine, they feed him by one, one cable, but... Oh, so they feed him by tube, yeah. yeah. So, um, so they were charging her a thousand pounds a week. Yeah. But she does not have that money. All family joined to yeah. pay and... Did she willingly pay it or did she want him to be uh, left to die? She pray every day for him to die yeah. um, in a natural source because she is Christian. But I think she's so desperated if he has some option to say, let him go. Well, it sounds to me. I think she, she would like that. Because well, from what you're saying, it's just, I, 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 you know, and let's assume it anyway, if he's brain dead, then uh, keeping the body alive if he's brain dead, then there is no person there. The person, in a sense, has died. The body is still alive. The human being is still functioning, so as a member of the species. But it's, there's no person there. So I would say I couldn't see no reason why you would want to keep the, the body of a dead person alive indefinitely, especially at a thousand pounds a week. Unless you thought that would be murder on her part of so, well, after, that's what I said. I think of, there's two different things you've talked about in terms of infanticide. There are unwanted children, and there are, there, there are children that might not achieve personhood. So, I think there is a difference between intentionally depriving someone of personhood and someone who didn't achieve it. I think the decision would be, the decision you would make is different. Um, I think. There, are, there, there must be some rights to someone who has potential personhood. Well, that's why I don't see. I don't see how, because you could say, let's say in vitro, you fertilize an egg. Yeah. So now, in a sense, you've got the beginnings, potentially, of a unique human being. Mm -hmm. You could 
put that into a woman and bring it to term and have a... Sure. But you say just because the now, oh no, now the egg has been fertilised. No, now you've got to I, go, I don't say who that. the hell that put that sperm in that egg? In that, you know. So, well, if you, uh, you see, I don't see a big difference between the in vitro fertilisation and uh, the in woman fertilisation. If you, you can start it and you can stop it. And um, no, but in I, either case, is there a person? I think you're arguing for withdrawal of support for an unwanted human yeah. that had potential. Not, not that we, don't, we don't know that it might have achieved personhood, but we do know it has the potential to... Well, you can, assume that they, that you can assume for the sake of argument that it, it would have been a person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. and, and, but, as I said, you can assume for the sake of argument any any uh, test tube which you have a where you fertilise the egg. No, I is don't it, think so. I think is, uh, that, is that different? Is it different when it's in a test tube rather than in the woman? Yes. What's the difference? Well, it's many parts of, of developmental progress that happens. It's got a brain. It's got eyes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is a big test tube, and you can actually uh, let it keep going for several weeks. Uh, or the, uh, at some point, you then see. No, I don't think. I don't think where it's just has anything to do with it. I really don't. I think it's just stated in a, in a plastic bag. Right. But once it gets a brain and, and has senses and has potential to become a person, I think. But it has the potential to become a person before it had the brain and senses. It still had the potential no, because it had the potential to have the brain and the senses. And as I said, you can take a lot of inanimate matter, probably say food, and say all of this food has the potential to be a person because we can turn it into a person by... But, but you also said that it's not by degree. So, you, well, sorry, it, you know, it's, it's by degree and a person doesn't just switch on at a certain point. So I would say the point that it has a brain there's more than just potential. There's, it's, it's almost there. It's only a year away. Well, sorry, uh, a mouse has a brain. Is a mouse a person? It doesn't have the total percent. You, it will never write a novel. <laughs> so oh, that's your yeah, criteria. Yeah. No, 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 or an email, or a text. I'll <laughs> <laughs> never say oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, A mouse, a mouse. Well, you say a mouse can never be a person. Well, actually, this is a famous <laughs> article by Tooley. <laughs> Tooley. James Tooley, I think it was. Oh, am yeah. I confusing with an IEA person? Uh, it wasn't James Tooley. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, this is another Tooley, but maybe of the same name. Uh, and he said, well, he said, suppose you could inject uh, a cat and uh, by this injection, you could cause its intellectual development such that it turned into a person. And suppose you've given it the injection. So now you know that in six months' time, it's not a person yet, it's still a cat, but in six months' time, its brain would have developed so much that it's enable, it will be enabled to tell you what it wants for breakfast. And uh, It's not a human person, though, is it? Oh, no. No, it's a different story. Oh, I didn't realise you were a speciesist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I we've got a speciesist in the room. I absolutely am a speciesist. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> well. Well, back to um, the mixing of labour. Uh, I can see how the man has the right to walk away, possibly, from the uh, from the fetus developing in the, in the woman's interior, but no right to insist that it be put an end to. Oh no, of course he doesn't have that right either. He no, he has no rights uh, 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 unless but unless right. there was at least a, a tacit contract that that, that uh, he has duties towards the unborn human if it's ever brought to term uh, then he can't uh, no, no, if there's no contract he has no rights and he has no duties he, he, unless he, he might want to take them on he might say to the pregnant woman as has often happened well now that you are pregnant and there is a child and I feel a bit more differently shall we get married and shall we um, uh, you know then uh, I will take responsibility, but I also have claims over the chart, and the woman might well agree, and that's often how it happened. Uh, but I don't think she has any 
right, as she does now to say, uh, well, you've got to be pregnant, you've got to hand your money over. Sorry, that's, I don't, don't, she has no more claim over him than he has over her with respect to the child. It's unless they explicitly contract. Well, it said, I say explicitly, it could be, it could be tacitly, but it's still got to be a real contract. And when I say tacitly, I mean, you don't explicitly contract when you go into a, a restaurant to pay for the food you're going to eat. You don't, they don't sign something, I agree to pay. It's just understood. You're going in, you order a meal, it's understood, the contract is tacit. Similarly, in certain parts of the world or in certain areas, it, there could be a tacit contract that if you get a woman pregnant, you're like, and everybody would know that. Uh, in that sense of the world. So it would be a real contract, and it would be just as real as the contract you have when you walk into a, a restaurant and order a meal, even though, even without signing anything, saying you're going to pay for it, or even being shown what the prices are. So, uh, but there has to be some kind of real contract, otherwise no rights or duties on either side. Not to each other, not... Uh, not with respect to the unborn human, so not to raise it or not to not raise it. Um, I mean, there are other complicated matters which I haven't gone into, such as what about if the woman decides she's going to raise the child, but then drinks a bottle of wine every day so that it has um, uh, alcoholic syndrome or whatever it's called, if such a thing really exists. I've heard, I have heard it denied. I'm, I'm not, it seems to be a real phenomenon, but I don't know. Let's assume it exists for the sake of argument. Um, uh, what, what's the moral situation? I didn't, I didn't want to go into that because that just, it complicates. There, there's enough, I had enough on my plate with abortion and infanticide and keeping it sort of focused on that area. To me, where where this argument goes wrong, I think wrong. <laughs> and, and let's be clear, it is wrong. <laughs> so, 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 the argument against abortion or infanticide are uh, both. Uh, well, or the, both. The, the approach. Like, and, and which of the three? Well, explain, which of the three? I'll okay. Explain, I'll explain where it is. Does it go wrong or start wrong? Uh, <laughs> I think it goes wrong. I think it probably it starts wrong. Yeah. It starts well and goes wrong, and it yeah. goes wrong because you you're you're trying to. Uh, theorise the, as you say, the pre-propertarian, libertarian baseline. No, no, I'm not. No, no, you said that before. No, I'm no, not. I'm, not really, but carry and on. Then, and then you, then you rely on, to take away the absolute squeamish horror of it all, mm. you rely on saying, well, in realistically, people will contract into all sorts of societies where these things probably won't happen. Yes. But I think it would be a lot better if we just simply went a bit more imaginative and just construed what we know about the world into our libertarian baseline as we were, say, to make libertarianism a little bit thicker. It seems to me that your libertarian is so thin, so compressed, so focused only on this very, very narrow window of personhood mm. that it just looks so absolutely horrific and unappealing on both sides. You just say you, somebody's unconscious. Uh, unless they've got contracts we can unplug them, you can say, well, somebody's unconscious, they're not a person, fuck the contracts, we don't have to pay them anymore, man. we'll pull the plug anyway. It's, 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 yeah. uh, it seems to me that we can, cons we know what the world's like, we know that most healthy babies are, you know, they're googling and laughing and they're like, we don't have to say, it has to have Go Googling? Googling, <laughs> Look, That baby is a like, person, if it's googling. <laughs> Recognising things. Yeah. Recognising, you don't have to say. It seems to be absurd to say it has to have meta theories before we before we restrain ourselves from smashing its head against a wall <laughs> after we've drugged it off on heroin so it doesn't feel the pain. That's just nonsense. It's, well, you have you have so, There are so many absurd things that your baseline allows, and we can construe into. We can make our libertarian baseline a little bit broader, a little bit thicker, and infinitely more attractive and less ludicrous. I don't. I don't think there's anything ludicrous about it. I think that. Uh, <laughs> The thick libertarianism, I'm afraid, is ludicrous because it, it can't really explain, from a libertarian point of view, uh, the thickness, as it were. Mm. I mean, I, I, I can explain how it's legitimately thick when it is, and that would always be within a propertarian context. And now, people have 
after lots of experience, decide where they stand on these issues and which, what kind of a community they wish to live in. And so certain things are not allowed. Uh, and, but, and, but why are we going to say, and we can rule but, 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 Let me take another one. Rather than saying, wait until we've, we've got Disneyland and the rules of Disneyland, so you can't do this. Oh, no, well, because I want to allow. Yeah, because uh, because, I'm, because, 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 because I want to allow, because I want to allow the, 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 the real right the real right of what you call thin libertarianism, mm. where there are no contracts. I mean, do you think it's outrageous uh, that um, the man can walk away and say, well, I'm not married to you, it's not my baby, uh, you didn't want to abort it, oh, even though I wanted you to? Do you think it's... Uh, you think that's how the man should be forced to uh, no, support? No, I don't. No, you but don't. I, no, but I think uh, on a particular example, I don't. And, uh, I but do. that's based on but thin I, libertarianism. That's it, based on thin libertarianism. You know what, I think uh, that, that's a thin, thin libertarian. I, I want to go say, I want to go. That, I want to be weird. Think, you know, I'm not crackers. <laughs> I don't want yeah. thick, thick, thick libertarian, which is ends up like socialism. Yeah. But, uh, but I think you can we can construe from what we know about the world. And what is absolutely, you know, it's just to say, to say you know, we can make food a potential person or we can make sperm a potential person, yeah. there's a world of difference between a plate of sausage and mash and a three month old baby. And it's just nonsense to pretend that both are equally unpersons. They're not. Well, one is further along the road towards being a person. <laughs> but if the intellectual development of a three month old baby were to stop at three months and the, and the body kept growing, uh, it would be, uh, I mean, it would never achieve, it would never have the intellectual achievements of a mouse, let alone a dog, and it would look like a person. And of course, the parents ought to be allowed to feed him or her, and if they wish, and we'll, but, the, but it, I, it, it, there simply has to be this criterion, ultimately, however. Uh, complicated it is, and, and I admit it needs to be discussed and gone into. I'm not saying this is a knockdown argument. This is, it's, uh, it is a new theory of personhood. There aren't many theories of personhood around. But, but realistically, we're not going to end up going back to being like Sparta, where we chuck all the you know, malformed babies off a cliff. Well, 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 all I think it's not a question of going back. I think or even just what this nurse told me at that time. I think still holds. I, in the same sense that there are doctors and nurses knocking people off in hospital, uh, putting them on the Liverpool pathway, they used to call it for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like the sound of that. Then I was discovered, oh, it's not just in Liverpool. <laughs> um, so we have to allow the possibility. No, but your, your thin libertarians, having as thin as you want to, allows for so many absolutely sickening possibility, possibilities to be morally, to morally take place, and it, it just becomes a preposterously unlikely. Sorry, well, sorry, sorry. Pro you might say these things are like... Morally, morally, okay, give me, yeah. give me, give, give me, give me, give me some yeah, of these... Somebody, somebody sets up a factory buying newborn babies, they put them all on heroin, and then they just invite them, people pay to rape them on a conveyor belt, just... Or oh, eugenics. How do you, how do you rule that? Yeah, you know, we... How do I rule that out? Yeah, I, well, I, I, do you think that's you, you? You're saying to me that that's that's there's nothing immoral about that. that and that's so. That's so. Oh no 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 no, no 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 no! I didn't say that. Um, uh, because libertarianism is not the whole of morality. Uh, it doesn't deal with animals, for instance, as I admitted. Well, the, the uh, idea that I'm you shouldn't be uh, indefensibly cruel to. Uh, non-persons yeah. is no part of libertarianism no, no, no. but it's a is a moral principle that i yeah, agree but, with but, but there are other reasons the there are all kinds up with which we will not however however i don't think the fact that you can say that in principle we can imagine some bizarre thought experiment well, which, is, which is which is which is so things. which is so disgusting and awful that that that, that then we'll get that that we think that refutes the quite reasonable position uh, that before you're a person, abortion and infanticide seem to be acceptable in principle, not compulsory. Then, but you know, we can imagine in all likelihood people have very, very good reasons to do what they do. Um, it's, it's not arbitrary, and that to uh, not to allow them to do that will create moral hazards and more problems than it. Um, 
in the Linux source. Uh, I just don't see how you you can say this this bizarre theoretical possibility no, no. Inter is is a refutation of the more reasonable the more reasonable case. It might be more reasonable to say, uh, well, we won't allow these. Right. Disgusting uh, yeah. fantasies that you have for some reason. <laughs> we won't allow not, that. They're not, they're, they're reductive we, we won't, but yeah, but, but the, on the issue on the issue of on the issue of infanticide and abortion, um, the arguments do not seem similarly uh, horrific. Of course, they do to some people. Of <laughs> course, uh, in America, um, where they are, sort of a very uh, God benighted people, quite uh, remarkable. I mean, they they probably would see this as a, they do see some people do literally see abortion as horrific, but then they don't have a theory of personhood, and if they did, <laughs> they'd be a bit more reasonable. So I think was, I think you can focus the argument on where it is applicable and say uh, in areas where it's much more problematic. Um, well, separate arguments would be required, but with when it comes to abortion and infanticide, we have something real and practical and focused. Uh, we, it doesn't need to be. We've got to write something into the libertarian baseline that rules out this horror. There has to be something there. Otherwise, sorry, sorry, it rules out the horror of other people. That you're prepared to tolerate. I didn't say I was prepared to tolerate them. Morally. I didn't say I was morally prepared to tolerate them. You I didn't. Did you say you I said all I morally. all I am focusing on is that is 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 all I'm focusing on is abortion and infanticide before yes. you're a person. Now you come up with some bizarre thought experiment, you, you said, and, and, you and, said, and I said I don't I don't really I haven't really I haven't really thought a lot about that. Uh, um, I, I, uh, if I were to think about it, I might have some uh, arguments against it. Um, probably, I'm assuming I would have arguments against it. Well, we for also, uh, but but it, it's sort of irrelevant to the central issue, which is, I mean, there's a real practical problem of uh, whether people should be allowed to have abortions or not. Certainly, I don't think they should have a right to abortions at the taxpayer's expense. But to pay for one if they want, and whether the only, as I said, the only rationale for being able to have an abortion, as far as I can see, is it's not a person. But then that has to extend some time after birth. Yeah, but uh, that's, that's where almost nobody agrees. Nobody alive thinks that apart from psychics. Oh, yeah, but wait. <laughs> it, I, give me a hundred years, and my arguments. <laughs> Will have completely caught on, and you'll be saying, "Oh, that's you'll be." Then you'll be saying, "Oh, that's common sense. Nobody ever thought anything different." <laughs> Tom, so linking on to what you just said, and that's something so horrific. But you, if we had a, a, a group that you said before, where you get a girl pregnant, there's a, an implicit contract that you. So you could also have a group yeah. that said. We only really want blue-eyed, blonde-haired, tall people. Well, that's now ah. That, now I, I, I yeah. deliberately avoided euthanasia. Uh, no, no, but you, but, but yeah. before the okay. persons, you could choose for whatever reason to, in fact, you know, stop giving support to a particular yeah. future being, mm. and on the basis of their their physical characteristics. I would I would, in another talk, defend libertarian euthanasia. Uh, uh, now, euthanasia is something that we all go in for in one sense. That is, it, when you choose a partner, you choose the best partner you can and vice versa for reproduction. If reproduction is what you're after, uh, you are, tr in a sense, trying to get the best offspring you can. Uh, if it were uh, then possible to check your potential child uh, in utero for spina bifida or various other things, I just can't see anything wrong with that. And see, well, if, it, if this one has definitely got spina bifida, I'd rather we abort yeah, this one. And have it. So, well, I didn't want to get into that because yeah, it is what, another what, what area. What about selecting for positive attributes such as 
you know, a specific aesthetic things that you like, like blue, uh, blue, blue eyes and, and... Well, I think, again, I think this is getting into another... This is getting into a different area, and one of the things philosophy does. You didn't differentiate because as long as they're not achieved personhood yet, you have. No, no, no. Well, I think no. I think it's. We could go into that, but it, 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 what I mean is, it's a whole uh, different can of worms. Sure. Euthanasia. Now, in a sense, everything is everything is related to everything else, and if you really want to, you can link everything to it. But one of the things that uh, philosophical arguments do is they try to focus on a certain problem and keep the other issues out. And I didn't go into euthanasia intentionally because it seemed to be really a whole other But don't you need that context to argument. the truth? But at the same time, I would say, I'm sorry, I, would say I, I, I can't see uh, uh, anything think, inherently wrong with choosing that. people. So, for instance, if you are gay, you might want to have gay children. And you should be allowed to do so, as far as I can see, offhand. I haven't thought long and hard about these things. If you're not gay, you might want to not have gay children. And you should be allowed to do so, as far as I can see. Or have blue-eyed children, or brown-eyed, sure. or Select anything else. Selecting. But really, this yeah. really is a separate no, but, no, but selecting a conception. problem attributes so that it's guaranteed to be yes to, but but removing them from after they've been born because they've not achieved personhood is completely different to euthanasia euthanasia you choose to die because no 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 illness. euthanasia just means easy death mm. it comes yeah. from the greek okay you kindly gentle as in the eumenides the kindly ones right. who later became the okay. furies in greek mythology yeah. and uh, thanatos death <laughs> so euthanasia means easy death now um, so uh, I, you can give, uh, you can murder somebody gently, and in that sense, uh, uh, yeah. But it can be an easy death. You can euthanize. Compulsory euthanasia is not a contradiction in terms, though it would be murder, from my point of view. But it's, it's still, it'd still be. You killed somebody. I saw the film once where a man decided he was going to murder somebody, but he liked him, so he. You know, he, he slit his arm and, and he held his hand and said, don't worry, it will be over very soon. And he, and he was deliberately murdering somebody in the kindest way he knew. Uh, now, That's I don't think... That's not really kind to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was going to die. Uh, Put it in the back of the back of the hell is going to. The hell is But... Uh, uh, so we're talking, well, and, and then euthanasia, well, as I said, I think it's a whole different can of worms, euthanasia. <laughs> yeah, they, not, there's an obvious overlap. There's an obvious overlap. Well, that's what you describe. You describe euthanasia Cut, uh, good, uh, for non-persons. Mm. That's basically what you've, you've oh, sort of yeah. struggled into that. I think you're allowed, I think if, if, some, if something is a non-person, and whether it's human or not human, then... Uh, I think... It, uh, um, I don't think you should treat other animals Cruelly, but if you raise a happy pig in a happy pig farm and then you kill him and there's no fear or uh, pain involved and uh, you're then and you eat, you eat the lovely bacon afterwards <laughs> with eggs similarly from happy hens um, I don't think there's a big problem there happy but bacon. there would be a problem if if pigs if pigs or chickens were persons. Yeah, you forget I'm species, so I could care less about that. Oh, right, okay. But, uh, <coughs> I think it was the Greeks, or was it the Romans? Um, if a woman felt that she couldn't look after the baby, couldn't afford to look after the baby, you would take the, the newborn tot, or fed a newborn tot, off to the market, and you put it in a pot. And a pot for that purpose. Tot in a pot. And people wandering past would go, oh, that's a body baby. You know, my yeah. wife can't produce them, and then you pick it up, pick it away. Now, if you're a utilitarian, which you probably aren't, but if you were, you might think, what's well, a good argument for saying, you know, you may, you may just say, here's, I produced the baby, I've got nothing to do with it. Mm. That's it. Yeah. I don't have any rights to pump it off. I don't want it, it's not mine. I don't regard it as my property. I no. think most people would do that. Yeah. But there would be some people who would say, I do not want, for some yeah. reason, 
might be to do with inheritance laws or something. I do not want my progeny, this progeny of mine, to survive. And if it's not a person, then... So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a crime to neglect under death, obviously? As long as there was no pain, uh, undue suffering. Uh, then, yeah. But, uh, because, as I said, there, otherwise, there is no rationale for why abortions are acceptable but infanticide isn't. They, and, and the idea is, oh, well, once, they, once the child is outside, that's, there's, there's no real rationale there. Uh, where, it's, that is not what makes a difference. The only thing that really is makes there, a difference is, is it a person? No, no, there is a and that is ultimately an intellectual thing, whether no, something no, is a person. Once it's outside, someone else can take responsibility. Yes, and that, that's a, a complete change of situation, isn't it? Inside, there's only the mother can look after it. Outside, anybody can look after it. Mm. And that's a massive difference. So don't take it outside the house. <laughs> <laughs> right. So thank you anyway, John, for an <laughs> yeah. interesting talk. Oh, very good.